In the previous lessons, I've shown you how to create a three-dimensional array and how to locate elements within that array by using this type of syntax, which we refer to as pointer offset syntax. Pointer offset syntax is one way that you can reference array elements in a multi-dimensional array, but it is not the only way. The other type of syntax you can use is called subscript operator syntax, which is also called bracket syntax. If we wanted to print the exact same character here using subscript operator syntax, it would look like this. We don't need the size, so rather than saying 18 times 1, we can take that out. We can take out the 6 times 1 and then we use brackets. And that's how the bracket syntax or the subscript operator syntax works. Now the reason it's called subscript operator syntax is because these brackets in this case are referred to as a subscript operator. And we'll get into that more later. So what I want you to understand right now is simply that there are two ways to do the same thing. You can use the bracket syntax or you can use the pointer offset syntax. The, the advantage to using the bracket syntax is, as you see, you write less code and it can be easier to understand intuitively. You're saying set one, word one, character one. And so it's easy to understand that. However, before you're allowed to use the subscript operator syntax, you have to explain to C that you are going to have a multi-dimensional array, which we haven't done up until now. We've created the multi-dimensional array, but we haven't done so in a way that C understands that this is in fact a multi-dimensional array. As far as C is concerned, this is just a string of text, or more specifically, a one-dimensional array of characters. So in order to demonstrate subscript operator syntax to you, I need to make some changes to our array that we're calling array 3D and I'm going to make those changes now and then we'll continue the lesson. Okay so here we are. I renamed our original array to now be called old array 3D and then I made a copy of it called new array 3D. What I want you to understand is that both old array 3D and new array 3D look exactly like this in memory there's no difference to the data. It's the exact same bytes, characters, null termination characters and everything. The only difference between new array 3D and old array 3D is that I have done some magic in order to tell C that I can use the subscript operator syntax for new array 3D and I'll show you how to do that in a moment but before I do that I want to make sure that you understand how this works. So if I want to print a specific character, then I need three dimensions. I need three different numbers inside these brackets. The first is going to correlate to this. The second is going to correlate to this. And the third is going to correlate to this. So let's try this out. Let's say I want to print the E in three. Well, I know that I am working with the first set of 18 characters, so it'll be 18 times 0. I know that I'll be working with the third word, and since the first word is 0, which is the first six characters, the second word is 1, which is the next six characters, then I'm going to be working with word 2. And last, I need to add to that 1, 2, 3. In other words, character 3. So if we run this program, what I want you to notice is that both printf statements do exactly the same thing. Alright, so that's how I can print a specific character. How can I print a specific word? Well, we're going to change this to say that instead of printing a character, we're going to print a string of text. I no longer need the offset of a specific character. And of course I'm not saying what is at that memory address anymore, I'm just saying the memory address. Remember, whenever you have percent %s, 
then C is expecting a pointer, not a specific value, whereas percent %C it's expecting a particular value. So now if I run the program, you'll see the result is that I print the word 3. What if I want to print the capital version of the word 3? Well then I'm not going to use 18 times 0, I'm going to use 18 times 1, but the same word, like so. And you'll see that I'm printing the capital version of the word 3. So what I want you to understand is that the bracket syntax and the pointer offset syntax are very closely related. You can convert one to the other. However, in order to be able to use the subscript operator syntax, you must tell C that you're working with a multidimensional array and you need to give C the specifics of how big each element of that array is. Now why do you need to do that? Well, let's imagine that we have this line of code and nothing else. How can we possibly know that this is referring to the second set of 18 characters unless we know how large each array element is. So what you need to do before you can use the subscript operator syntax is you need to tell C how big your array is. And the way that you do that is very simple. When we create a new array 3D, we do it like this. We tell it that we're going to have three sets of three sets of six characters. That's it. That's all you have to do in order to now be able to use the subscript operator syntax. Now, how does this work? You're basically saying that you have three dimensions or three different offsets. The, the third one being potentially the specific character that you want. For example, if we wanted to print a specific character. Let's just do that real quick. I'm just going to comment this out for right now. I just want you to see that this works and see that we're printing the first character of the word 3. So in order to be able to do that, we have to know that each word is six characters in size. Then we need to know that we have three words. This is where we get the 18. And last we know that we have three sets of 18. So just to recap, this value specifies how many characters, and then this value specifies how many sets of characters, which is useful because 6 times 3 is 18, and that's how we get this value. And now that C understands those values, we don't need to specify them here when we are using the subscript operator syntax. So with this line of code, I am creating the new three-dimensional array, but I'm not setting it to anything. So what am I doing then exactly? What I'm doing is I'm telling C to locate some position in memory, call it new array 3D, but don't put anything in it. So as soon as I've written this line of code, what I basically have is this structure with nothing in it. So how exactly do we fill those 54 bytes with the data structure that we created earlier? Let's go back to the very beginning of the program and I'll walk you through step by step how to do that. And here we are. This is where we started the lesson. So here we have our program designed to print the capital N from the word 1 because of course we're looking at 18 times 1 plus 0 plus 1 and we have our original array 3D so how do we create a three-dimensional array that we can actually use well first of all let's create it we'll call it new array 3D say it's three sets three sets of six characters now in order to fill it let's go ahead and create two pointers we'll create one pointer for array 3D and we'll set it to array 3D and we'll create another pointer I'm 
My spacing here is just to make this easier to read. The reason I prefixed the pointer name with P underscore is just so we know it's a pointer and what it's pointing to. That way when we use it later on in the program we won't get confused. So all I've done is I've created a pointer pointing to the exact same memory address. So to be clear, P array 3D points here. P new array 3D points to the equivalent except there's nothing in it. And that's what we're going to change. So let's create a looping variable and we're going to create a simple for loop here. We're going to say for i is less than what? Well, let's see how many elements do we have. We have a total of 54 elements, 0 through 53. So while i is less than 54, we're going to increment i. And then what we're going to do is we're going to fill new array 3D one byte at a time like this. We're going to say what is at the memory address of of new array 3D plus i. When we start at zero it'll be the first character then plus i will be plus one and it'll be the second character and so on. Is going to be equal to what is at the memory address of array 3D plus i and that's it. After we've finished that for loop we will have duplicated array 3D as new array 3D. All we're doing is this. Let's imagine that we start off with new array 3D being empty, not having anything set but having the basic data structure. When we run that for loop what we're going to do is fill the data structure. We're going to fill it with the exact same characters as Array 3D. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and write out this line of code. And there you go. And that's it. Now we have a true three-dimensional array and we can use it as a true three-dimensional array. If I want to print a string of text, I can do just like we did in the previous lesson. I'll take out the second, or rather the third offset because we don't need it. That specifies a character. And there you go. And you'll notice that it works correctly. Now the only problem with this is that if you're creating an actual 3D array, you will typically not want to write out the entire data structure in memory. You want to be able to reference the elements of the, the array and set them in a more direct fashion. And I'll show you how to do that in the next lesson.